Good morning, friends. Welcome to uh, OBE Journal 2017, um, Part 21. Um, as I focused before uh, turning on the camera, I felt myself to already be in the presence, or, you know, obviously the projected part of myself to be already in the presence of John Fitzgerald Kennedy. And uh, he has signaled that he's uh, ready to speak. And he's uh, telling me that, and he's understanding that, you know, how this will be transmitted. He's telling me that although he's not particularly pleased with the the current uh, trending direction of uh, uh, world events, geopolitical uh, conflicts and strategies. <clears throat> whether in uh, Europe or the Middle East or North America. He is uh, hopeful for the future. He does see uh, selfless idealism and a desire to... Uh, better the lot of mankind in general, uh, not only emerging, but strengthening. And uh, to this he would uh, draw our attention and uh, have us focus. Although countries uh, continue to compete for control of resources and finances. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I got a little slow on that one. Um, to the extent that uh, there is much... Uh, you know, uh, underhand cheating and fraudulent activity uh, by many, and he would not point the finger at uh, one or another. Uh, and of course, modern technology um, facilitates this, the uh, anonymous nature of modern technology can facilitate this, and can and does. Um, Spirit can oversee this sort of thing, and those who are interested fo can focus on the uh, source of fraudulent activity and uh, expose it, at least to themselves. And, uh, but also, they can, uh, if interested, and not everyone is, uh, many are enjoying the uh, the fruits of their spiritual strivings and labors in these heaven worlds. But souls such as he and others involved in diplomacy and governance, and he says intelligence matters too. He said there are many intelligence uh, operatives and uh, directors who still take an interest in world events and uh, from the point of view of uh, encouraging others to uh, hasten the planet to a, a greater degree of uh, harmony and cooperation, uh, they too can uh, participate in this uh, focused curiosity. Uh, by uh, tuning in to uh, 
the thoughts and strategies of those who uh, <laughs> uh, operate underhandedly while making uh, uh, statesman-like speeches publicly. He says, and yes, I did such myself. I inherited m many, many uh, challenging and difficult situations, all of, many of which I was aware of before I, I became uh, president. But it is uh, much more complex to uh, assume that mantle than one would ever suspect, even if one has been in the pipeline, shall we say, for many years as I was, and sense a destiny coming towards one. And, you know, uh, all heads of state uh, wear a crown heavier than their capabilities. Uh, regardless of, uh, you know, uh, country, political persuasion, or ethnicity. The peoples of the world... wish for a peaceful, purposeful existence. Many of them do so. Those who wish to challenge and uh, decimate the uh, others who appear to oppose them or suppress them are, in my mind, his mind, definitely a minority. The majority of souls seek harmony with their neighbors, seek cooperation with their neighbors. And we feel here in spirit that no amount of violent activity can discourage them from this uh, goal, this ideal. There are many now around the planet who understand in their hearts and souls that the representatives, the living representatives of other nations and other religions and other cultural traditions can be the best of friends, can be the most exciting and thriving of business partners, can be on teams which will promote and persevere in the uh, necessary struggles, both uh, practical, practical and technical, of uh, making the world a better and happier place for all. We see this when we inspect the minds around the world, which many of us do. We have been shown how to do this, and we do it. Yeah. Plus, let do not forget that here we are in, in spirit, 
uh, living the lives or similar lives that you have heard about through uh, channels such as this medium and many others. So we too uh, experience the visits of spirits who are physically asleep on earth. And we interact with them in a meaningful way. Those who are interested in diplomacy and governance and international affairs come to us with their concerns. Not all of them, some of them. The balance of powers is of uh, great concern to some. And not less so to those currently, currently holding the reins of power. Discussions that are held between the so-called dead and the so-called living in this situation uh, parallel those that di diplomats and uh, politicians might have in private at such things as the, uh, the current G20 uh, meeting. Uh, when uh, person A and person B uh, leave the public grand meeting and have uh, refreshments together and sit one-on-one -on -one and discuss matters frankly in a way that uh, is not ever going to be uh, publicized by the media, they have conversations similar to the ones we have when the sleeping uh, persons project to where we are. And believe me, they know how to do this. Their spirits know how to do this. Now that doesn't mean that things are inst instantly resolved. Tensions exist and uh, distrusts and competitiveness uh, uh, come alongside and uh, they may fade for the sake of a diplomatic conversation and an ex honest exchange of views, but they don't necessarily disappear. Um, discussions that I, for example, have had with Mr. Gorbachev uh, for quite a number of years, on and off, um, as he visits here in sleep, as many do. Don't take that name to be uh, a one and only. There's many. Um, but he has shown an interest over the long haul in these matters. And those discussions would be not out of place if I were still alive and able to meet him in, in a diplomatic uh, uh, conference setting, such as the G20. And um, these discussions are frank and without pretense uh, and with a recognition that the power structures uh, of the states involved in uh, challenging and uh, difficult situations uh, are not going to suddenly change or bend to our will just because we're discussing a certain issue and uh, trying to resolve it in our minds, in our hearts. And of course there are those in the, the planetary uh, power structure, if I may call it that, those who uh, of uh, uh, 
wealth and influence uh, who do not wish things to become more harmonious or uh, more uh, pleasant and uh, what's the word uh, that he's using more pleasant and uh, happier uh, for the common man they do not wish for these things they wish to consolidate their own power and build their own uh, family empires uh, at, and at the cost to others is uh, of little or no significance to them. And these people and these families exist in all nations. I could point the finger to America. I could point the finger to Russia. I could point the finger to various places in Europe and the Far East. Those types of souls exist everywhere and they do have power and they do have influence and they can make things happen in a way that is beneficial to uh, only them and their apparent friends and I say apparent because uh, smiles and handshakes over uh, expensive dinners do not a friendship make. Uh, temporary uh, <laughs> temporary alliances to uh, benefit those only in the alliance, whether it be three, five, or twenty, are such. And it has been argued, and will continue to be argued, that uh, world uh, events, geopolitical strategies, have always been so. People join together for mutual advantage in business and in politics. But we here see uh, another trend that was uh, very small in centuries gone by developing into a greater and greater force where countries will collaborate on uh, idealistic projects of charitable nature to uh, benefit the sufferings abroad to alleviate the uh, struggles uh, in uh, desperately poor uh, third world countries and concomitant with this uh, thrust this uh, charitable idealistic uh, movements engaged in by uh, forward-looking souls in many countries. On the sides of those uh, tides of uh, heartful, uh, honest, sincere efforts are always those who would join in merely to benefit themselves and their economic enterprises. We see this going on and we understand the uh, eternal nature of such uh, activity and we see a harmony in it. There, is, there are always those who would uh, latch on with uh, willingness and uh, concordance to uh, merely benefit themselves and their family 
or corporate structures. And for some, family structure and uh, tradition is corporate structure and tradition. They are one and the same. And they often will see themselves and their uh, growing power and sustaining uh, enterprise to be necessary uh, to uh, the thrust of beneficial action for others. They will conflate the two so that the ongoing uh, honorable status and e economic expansion of the power base of their enterprise is necessary to their continued effectiveness in the world. They will say, we cannot do this unless we are wealthy and powerful. Because if we were not, we would not be admitted to the corridors of such activity. We would be barred from this. And they truly believe this as they uh, expand their profit margins and personal empires. And as, as many of you will you know, instinctively recognize, I speak from what I know. I came from such a family. And I, myself, uh, to some degree, uh, employed these uh, rationalizations in my stratagems. I never stopped thinking while alive of uh, methods to uh, enhance humanity's ability to be productive and peacefully coexisting. But I also recognized that uh, the destinies of my family, extended family and colleagues were important and had to be protected. One joins a family midstream and becomes part of its forward thrust. One joins a government and a military, industrial and intelligence structure and tries to work within it to make it uh, uh, more uh, in line with one's uh, perceived ideals. For me, it was the uh, working within the uh, mental constructs of the Cold War mindset. And uh, as many of you will have realized in the interim, since my passing, Mr. Khrushchev had to do the same thing. As did the, uh, some of the other, not all, some of the other leaders in the communist countries. We were competing teams Uh, lashed to our ideologies and uh, prevented by such lashing from seeing the bigger picture. I myself had such troubles 
that I constantly struggle to overcome. But uh, uh, I was held back by my own uh, occasional lack of imagination and certainly by the uh, uh, dictates of those who had been in power longer than I had. I was seen as young and foolish, as was my brother. And perhaps to some we were, but uh, those who seek to effect change, positive, constructive change, are often seen that way. As, uh, as uh, idealistic irritants that need to be uh, dealt with. And in my heart of hearts, I understood this. Each president has his challenges, both personal and, you know, political. And the present one is no different from all the others. Despite his uh, sense of being, uh, or his perceived sense of being ill-prepared for the role. Um, he is uh, caught in the crossfire of... Uh, contrary opinions and uh, plans for the future. Some are on his team and some are not. It, but it was ever thus. I was the same. I was caught in the same uh, uh, conflict of uh, strategies and opinions and had to force my way through on occasion by sheer willpower. But enough of the uh, challenges of my, uh, my uh, beloved country. I look now to the fate of the planet and the uh, uh, peaceful resolution of its, you know, worldwide conflicts. And as I examine those and interacting with the thoughts of those who uh, come to visit, not only me, but uh, many others, um, uh, from all, all countries, and I urge you not to just think of the most powerful countries, um, statesmen and stateswomen, of uh, many uh, sources on the planet are active in these, you know, uh, ongoing activities. Um, I've had, uh, for example, and only for example, have had several uh, discussions with uh, Benazir Bhutto. Uh, not just concerning the uh, betterment of uh, women's lives in the world from which she emerged, but in the uh, resolution of international conflicts. And she has uh, many uh, profoundly creative thoughts on these matters and uh, is quite attuned to the, the way in which she can implement them now in spirit or in the ways in which she is uh, uh, hampered by being a spirit and not a physical person. One is hampered but one is not um, completely shut down. One can always influence the thoughts of others. 
Now, whether those uh, influenced thoughts can uh, change matters significantly is uh, more a matter for uh, cooperation amongst the various teams than the uh, idealistic notions of that one spirit. Um, but it was ever thus, both uh, on earth and in heaven. Once you have been here a while, you realize that. And uh, you refrain from getting uh, torn up over the uh, very exci various excitements involved in uh, uh, seeing how life could be uh, bettered for all. It can and will be, but maybe not at the uh, pace you would prefer. And uh, to that I would add, there's the, always the understanding that uh, everyone, regardless of their status or attitude and uh, cons constructive work towards these ideals or lack of it, comes here. Everyone goes to the heaven of their choice. So we understand this implicitly. We're all here. And we know that all you are going to be here one day or another. And uh, the resolution of conflicts can be seen as uh, mere uh, moves in the game of life. Uh, Significant and important moves, but uh, seen from uh, the uh, perspective of spirit, perhaps not as pressing as uh, they might have seemed upon one's first arrival here. And yes, uh, Many of uh, the spirits that I have indicated, the type of spirits, we are regularly, right now, in contact with the spirits of those at the G20 Summit. We have been since before it started. There is uh, much mental activity, both in the earth plane and the uh, spirit planes that surround it uh, in proximity to the location of the meeting. Everyone is keen to have certain issues resolved, but they still have differing attitudes and approaches to how those issues could be resolved. including those from countries who do not resolve issues by uh, discussion and uh, <laughs> uh, what we used to call horse training. Um, some of them are convinced that it can, things can only be resolved by force of will, by the leaders laying down a, a certain law that has to be followed. And uh, uh, discussions with those leaders will only reveal, as they have to me, their um, uh, inflexibility of their uh, attitudes, or the, the current inflexibility of their attitudes. And uh, we have to work with that if we wish to uh, continue, you know, I, a contact that is in some way creative. These leaders from these uh, uh, ethnic areas 
uh, come from a tradition where political decision making is not handled in uh, what we would consider a democratic fashion. It is uh, handled uh, from the top without much discussion except by those in the elite that, that, that consists of what I'm describing as the top. And they don't see anything wrong with that. They have elevated themselves to that status and feel that uh, only those you know, bearing the burdens of power uh, have the, the deeper understanding of the issues necessary in order to uh, direct the uh, paths that their countries need to take and uh, maintain. Now that does not mean they cannot be influenced, but it does mean that they have strong um, mental attitudes that need to be uh, carefully uh, approached and handled. And with the understanding that uh, any amount of uh, cordial exchange will not necessarily uh, turn the tides that we seek to turn. For example, the production and sale of armaments. It's uh, always been a large part of the uh, ongoing activity between countries and nations. In the modern world, and uh, many uh, citizens see this as uh, a sickness as uh, an unnecessary diversion of uh, uh, monies w which could be put to much more uh, beneficial act acts and activities. And uh, I sympathize with this view. Uh, it, it is true that money could be diverted to other causes. But in the atmosphere of uh, distrust and competition, which still exists amongst the uh, various power elites, uh, it is seen as necessary. You have to have the arms to defend yourself. And this uh, naturally arises from the long, long history of conflict on the planet. And as much as us peacemakers would like to see that dissolved, um, we have to work with uh, giant tides of tradition, which include the attitude that such arms production and sales are necessary. The uh, ancient truths of humanity's uh, attitudes and activities are, if not impossible to redirect, then extremely challenging. And I ask you to remember this as you, as you consider your own uh, uh, personal approaches to idealistic change. Issues can be resolved with great tenacity accompanied by great patience. Sufferings are alleviated over centuries, not decades or weeks.
and as uh, pessimistic as that may sound, I offer it to you as uh, an antidote to pessimism. For uh, in my current position, I can see that quite clearly I can see that uh, the passage of time is an illusion. Time only appears to pass. Characters only appear to be affected. And I include my own uh, <laughs> brand of character in that. Cultural trends and human activity is eternal and uh, is continually morphing into different forms as it explores the complexity of relationships, both personal and international. We play many parts in our lives and all of them are beset with significance of various kinds. And it is um, easy to become latched on to one form of significance over another. One's relationship with one's children is as important as one's relationship with one's counterparts in other countries. And although this may seem to be a given, it, uh, it can often be forgotten in the uh, excitements of uh, scheduling and trying to accomplish uh, goals, goals set out beforehand. Racial tensions will be resolved to everyone's satisfaction eventually, but certainly not in the next two or three months. And uh, I offer that uh, to complement your own thoughts on the matter, which I sense run along certain lines, similar lines. Um, here in spirit, there is much more racial harmony, but I wouldn't say it's complete racial harmony. There are many areas in spirit where the races uh, live, live separately, not by force, but by uh, general inclination. And there are only certain areas, as on earth, where the races mix freely and harmoniously. But there is certainly a greater degree of harmony amongst the races here, I feel. And I would offer that to you as uh, uh, a gift for your own futures. Understand that uh, what we experience here in uh, lack of uh, destruction and uh, suffering uh, can be transferred to the earth plane. Young people bring that vision with them as they uh, incarnate into the characters they will become. And I think you can see that in their uh, protesting and rejection of the norms. And while I would suggest that you always pay attention to the young uh, and try to incorporate their uh, wish for change into your programs, 
I would remind you that their idealism is uh, tempered by their uh, recent arrival from the paradise of harmony and uh, love uh, that exists here in spirit. And whatever measure of that harmony and peace and love that you can uh, absorb from this message and whatever uh, spirit uh, influence you may feel in your personal life, I, uh, I wish for you and I wish that you can take that absorption of uh, love and harmony and uh, replicate it in your own lives and societies. Um, we are ever with you. Spirits are never far away. And uh, by that I mean all spirits and the ones that you are close to. Much of my extended family is here, my brothers and others, but we uh, still keep in contact with those of our clan physically existing. Whether they remember it or not is uh, perhaps another story, but we do keep in contact and they do keep in contact with us as you all do. Visits between the worlds are not uncommon and will continue to increase as the worlds glow, grow closer in what I might call harmony. And that how that happens uh, is a complex issue that I don't feel uh, is useful to go into here, but uh, please understand that it is a process that is happening and will continue to unfold as the decades go by. So fear not for your futures. Whatever happens in the world, in uh, the cycles of creation and destruction, will not affect your gift of paradise and your uh, destiny to arrive here. The ways of arrival are many, but the uh, end product, the terminus of your uh, <laughs> journeys are all the same. I'm thanking Mr. Kennedy for his time, uh, <laughs> even though he lives in a world where there is not really any time, but uh, he is, uh, has, is and has been engaged with other spirits uh, around, in and around this G20 uh, uh, meeting. And uh, as I may have pointed out in other writings and uh, uh, videos, uh, such engagement by spirits in these high-level meetings is not uncommon. They have an interest, they have an interaction that has uh, preceded the meeting. And of course, whether the uh, living, physically living members participating in these meetings would remember these interactions as any more than, than the vaguest of dreams um, if at all, uh, is, um, I wouldn't quite say immaterial, but not, not of the greatest significance because their thoughts are influenced. Uh, and that is uh, what everyone seeks, I think, is a, uh, an ongoing 
interaction, creative interaction of thought, which leads to fresh action. Fresh action there may or may not accomplish its goals, but uh, such is the nature of human activity. Some stratagems uh, are successful and others not quite so. But we stumble on uh, with uh, the visions of resolution in our minds. And with that, my friends, I will bring this episode to a close. Uh, wishing you all well. Until next time, which will in fact be tomorrow. <laughs>